Today I got a VO9850. This is a Sony U-Matic 3 quarter inch, an SP 3 quarter inch. In for a repair. This one just needs some belts. We gotta change the belts and idlers on this one, which means basically stripping it down to get at the parts to change. But since these are a broadcast machine, it's gonna be relatively easy to get in and change the belts on this because hey, they're designed for it, right? Let's check it out. This is a Sony VO9850. This is a three quarter inch U-Matic machine and the client that owns it brought it in to get the belts replaced. So let's get started. First thing to note about a machine like this is the size. These things are huge. It takes up a good portion of my workbench. And I gotta, oh, you can use slotted screws. They're actually the ones that have got the, the alignment pin on them. But a regular slotted screwdriver will open these up. You can access the scanner. This is a forehead beast. Just looking to see where the belts are. There's one down here, a loading belt. And I think the rest of them are probably on the bottom. Just looking to see where they all are. All the belts that need to change. These you know some software are fairly easy to work on because everything just swings out of the way. Looks like the last time this one was serviced was uh, 99 by Bob in uh, Hollywood, California. We'll pull the bottom off of it. Of course, there's always one last screw with an arrow. And if you forget to take that screw out and give the board a yank, guess what's going to happen to the board? It's going to break. Okay, where are our belts that we need to change on here? Probably under this panel here. There's a couple. I'm looking for the real belts for the real drive. The loading belt is on the other side. We can see that. There should be some belts in here for the real motors, I believe, or the real drive. Remove this bracket. And then this circuit board should lift out of the way or not. There's one belt there for sure. I should be able to change this one by just doing that. Should come out of there, I think. I'm gonna hang up on. There we go. The old belt looks to be in okay shape. New belt's a round belt. Car dealer just reminding me that my car is scheduled to go in for service tomorrow in the AM. The uh, the radio is not receiving very well. There we go, new belt in place. There, that belt's done. Okay, that one's done. That's for the fast forward and rewind. These are the solenoids that, that pull the, uh, the drive idler back and forth. So that's one belt. I'm gonna find where the rest of them go in this thing. I can see one on the top, but there's apparently Two others I gotta find on this unit. So we can put this back in place. Yeah, my radio stopped uh, 
wouldn't say it stopped receiving, but it's, FM is kind of weak. AM works fine, but the FM uh, uh, reception is a bit bad. So, under warranty, so they're going to change the radio module. We'll close back up the bottom of the unit as I believe the other belts are accessed from the top. front loading mechanism just like that but it's not even plugged in what the heck somebody's been into this thing this wasn't even plugged in there's a belt on here that has to be replaced I have the belt for that and the other belts down here and then one of them is attached with this tire which uh, they've actually replaced it with an o-ring So it's fast forward rewind tire. And it's an O-ring that they've replaced it with. But lo uh, loading elevator belt. We've got one of those. It's also a round belt. So we'll change that out. That just comes off just like that. I like these machines that uh, belts just pop off of. And same with this whole loading mechanism. Like say the whole cassette elevator just lifts out so that you can access everything below it unlike consumer machines where you struggle to do anything these broadcast machines you just pop them apart there we go that belt's changed looks like it's stuck mid load as the cassette compartment is up I get the sneaking suspicion that there's more wrong with this than just belts because this connector was not plugged in. So somebody's been into this unit, it's probably got hidden problems. Uh, I'm thinking that this is a, a client that brings me a, a few things and he buys stuff and I'm thinking maybe he bought this machine and uh, was told it needs belts. We may find that there's a lot more wrong with this thing when I fire it up. The tire is all worn, but it'll come off. It's all kind of cracked, as you can see. This is the belt that's supposed to replace the fast forward rewind tire, or an O-ring, I should say. It's, it's uh, certainly not the same shape as the original tire, but I guess it's as, it's as close as we're going to get now because these things haven't had parts available for them in 
a long time. So that's probably the best that we're going to be able to do for this is to put a tire on. And then the last belt that I need to get to on this one is this loading belt down under the back here. And that's going to be the hardest one to get to. It's got a bracket. I might be able to take the gear out. That might be the easiest way is to lift this back of this bracket off back here. Take that bracket off and lift the gear out and then slip the belt in. That might be the easy way to do it. You see what I'm getting at, right? Remove that bracket, and then I should be able to pull, I might be able to pull the pin out and lift this, maybe not. I may have to take this whole bracket out. I didn't want to, but I may have to. I don't know how much clearance I'm gonna have here to do this. that I can pop this gear out of uh, the, uh, the worm gear. out of there. Now I can probably get the gear out and if I can fish the belt around the pulley from behind. With this disengaged I can also rotate I can also rotate the main loader get the uh, mechanism out of the way. Okay now I can get in there a little easier. belt remove this gear that this is out of the way and that might actually lift the motor up with it wouldn't that be nice I can just lift this whole piece out of the way gets that out of the way. So that was attached to the middle. This one should lift that bracket out. It should have the motor attached to it. Ah, just like that. It's easy when you know what you're doing, isn't it? See, I had to take that out. I had to take that gear out. I guess I could have wound the mechanism by hand to uh, move the... I still have to pull the... the, 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 the uh, pulley still had to come out because it's... Uh, it trapped the belt, but I had I wound the mechanism by hand, I could have uh, lifted this whole piece out, but I didn't know that. I didn't realize it wasn't fully unloaded. But I can put this back in place now. And to pull the belt down around the motor.
like that. There, now the motor's back in place, or the, I should say, the gear is back in place. You can put that bracket back on here that holds this rod in place. That goes on like that. Okay, so this goes back in like this. That drops in there. It's held in place with two screws and then the other bracket. This is actually a, a tape sensor, right, for, for the tape end. I think it's a tape end sensor. It's an optical sensor. This one goes on here, and it's screwed down from the top, or, or in from the bottom, but the screw goes down through the top. It's going to line up that bracket with that hole, and put this screw down through the top. Just like that. Okay, the belts have all been replaced on this unit now. I'm going to reassemble the front loader and uh, we'll give this thing a test. Okay, the front loader just sits in this machine. And I'll put that plug back in that was already undone for me. Front loader just sits in place. There's a lock bar that goes across the top here and locks it in place with these two pins. That's what holds the front loader in on this one. Pretty, uh, pretty slick. I always wish the home machines were built like this, but then this machine, when it was new, was probably 30 grand. Big difference. When you're spending that kind of money on a machine, you can design in ease of servicing. Something that you don't do on you know, $200 machines. Okay, I've got this unit ready to power up. It'll operate with the uh, board open like that. Power is on now. Let's grab a three-quarter inch tape and see if it threads it up. This is a, a small, uh, the type that would have gone in a portable unit. I've got a recorder that works with, with these small tapes. So these machines will take either size tape. And I hit play. And we have a picture. Well, we had a picture. Might be that that's all that's on the tape. Nope, yeah, that's all that was on the tape. So let's just rewind this tape.
you'll notice that the tape actually goes backwards it actually plays from the right side to the left side this is the supply spool this one's the take up if we watch the reels turning they turn opposite directions but the tape is unspooling from this side and it's spooling onto this side this is the take up side here what this sensor over here is for is if the tape were to go slack like if I were to stop the tape from turning it would cause it to go into shutdown so we'll just rewind this back to where the color bars are at the beginning if the tape were to stop turning for example and go slack this sensor would trip and shut it down as soon as the tape went slack there's a red LED down here you see and a photo sensor so if the tape were to stop being taken up the LED would hit the photo sensor shut the unit down into an emergency stop at this stage it probably won't do anything unless I eject the tape let's see if I can eject it uh, eject it may not even do anything I may have to power it right down to reset it and then I can eject it Here's the picture on playback. I can show you this. It's just some aerial footage from an airplane. So just aerial spraying. It's all that's on here. I don't have any sound hooked up because it's XLR and I don't have an XLR adapter. But I think that's all that's on that tape. It's just that one shot. Yeah, that's all that's on there. I can I can record something on this tape. Well, here it is. My 1998 wedding demo tape. I haven't seen this thing since, oh, I'm going to say probably maybe 2000. I think 2000 is when I completely, what the hell is that thing flying around here? 2000, I think, is when I completely, uh, moved everything to digital 2000 uh, 2001 I was shooting everything analog and I was I was shooting on uh, three-quarter inch um, beta 8 mil high 8 I was editing um, onto three-quarter from my uh, computer as opposed to SVHS like a lot of a lot were doing because the quality was better so I did my demo on I haven't seen this tape in years. Let's see if it plays. And I mean years. It's, it's, this tape hasn't been in a machine in 20 years. And it still plays. I don't have any sound on here. I, I can't even play the sound if I want to because I've got music. I just got voiceover and, and music on here, but uh, but I can play the picture. Ooh, look at my fancy logo. My phone number's gonna come up here, so I'm gonna have to block that out, but. Now, this is not my work. My commentary says, don't trust your, uh, don't trust your wedding to anybody else. This is somebody's wedding that I edited, that they brought me the tape. To edit this is my old studio with my mx1 my premiere a little mix board 
bunch of video equipment, monitors like you wouldn't believe everywhere. One of my old cameras, that was my old, uh, that was an old EVW 300. I would have been shooting this on uh, VX3, I think. This footage was shot with a VX3. I'm explaining why the why the analog cameras look better than digital. That was my footage here. You see the digital artifacting that was shot by my competition and had me edit it. But you can see the artifacting in the windows. So I was still at this point in the game. I was still uh, promoting shooting stuff in analog. I got a little bit crazy here with my special effects. And this is just a, like a oh the three quarter inch is sure showing its age, isn't it? Wow, look at all that ringing. Look at all that ringing that's showing up. That's an artifact of three quarter inch. What I used to do was this tape, was this this demo tape was actually a, a demo I put together and I used to use it for running off copies that I would hand out to people. I, I would run off copies on VHS. Oh, buddy of mine. There, it's his wedding. Um, yeah, I would run off uh, run off copies on VHS that I would hand to clients, and it just had a, had a, my little opening on there. Then it went into an actual demo, so I don't think I need to go into that. But this machine's working. I just thought I'd put that little quick little intro up there that I haven't seen in many many years, and it goes into an actual an actual demo that I put together that I would uh, hand out to clients to kind of show them what I was shooting what they would expect to get the quality that they would expect to get when I was doing weddings which was uh, very good quality oh this looks like, looks like either a policeman or a fireman's wedding it's a policeman's wedding I think anyway yep anyway that's about all I'm gonna show of this this was done obviously prior to uh, this was done prior to uh, 1998. This was probably done in 97 or 96. If it was on my 90, well, it might have been done 98. But anyway, uh, that's uh, that's that. This machine is fixed. Uh, I haven't tested the sound only because I don't have uh, XLR. But I'll plug headphones in and make sure the sound works on it. Yeah, I've got sound on. All right, no problem. Okay. I can't. Uh, and our studio. As I say, I can't let that music. I was using Flim and the BBs for my background music. Anyway, it's working, so this one's all done. Time to rewind this tape. It rewinds partially loaded so that it can read the control track. I love these simple two. Uh, this is what I got fired over, by the way, when I worked in broadcast. Was the machines that we uh, had? They didn't have tops on them. Like the tops were like part of a part of the operator's job as master control. We used machines like this for a broadcast that go to air. And part of my job was every day take the top off the machine. The screws weren't in it. Flip that little knob there flip the board up clean the heads oh I didn't clean the heads on this should I do that let's clean the heads let's clean the heads on this one I bet it's filthy so I would get my cleaning solution we used xylene back then a piece of paper or a Kim wipe we used to use wet the paper with cleaning fluid and hold the paper up against the drum and turn clockwise because these ones you turn clockwise you always go the direction that the tape head spins in this case it's clockwise
yeah, fair bit, fair bit of uh, tape oxide on this one. Same goes for the audio heads. This is the erase head over here. I think it's the time code reader as well. And then the audio head on this is actually down over here. Because remember, the tape on three quarter inch caps this down over here. Capstone's always spinning on this one, which makes it easy to clean. And dirty it was. Holy smoke, was this thing ever dirty? Yeah, you think? The tape is pulled out and it's wrapped around. It's pulled out this way and it's wrapped around the head like that. And then it goes back this way. So it's pulled around the, I guess the queuing head. It reads the time code. It reads the control track for the time code. Um, and the erase head and then it runs around the head drum and then the audio head and control track head over here capstan the pinch roller is what's over here it moves around and then it goes back this way i'll just put one uh, tape in here again just to make sure everything's good i'll just use his tape Yep, color bars are good. This is the machine I got. Cr I got sheet can. Uh, what had happened was the tape got stuck to the pinch roller and started winding around the pinch roller and caps, and so the tape was playing faster and faster and faster. So I get back to the studio. I, I was in, I was in the, uh, the the truck. The tape started winding around. I was playing faster and faster, so I run back to the control room and I hit stop. The stop button is on this stop. And and it unwinds like this. And it's a whole bunch of tape that is still forget whether it was wrapped around the pinch roller or the capstan shaft. I think it was wrapped around both. It was, it was stuck to the capstan shaft. And of course, it, by the time I got back there, it was, it was, it was a mess. And I unraveled. I stopped it. And it was wrapped around, it was around the pinch roller, actually. So I, the tape was all there, so I unraveled the tape. Doing something that I would normally do, cleaning the machine. I unraveled the tape and uh, then took the tape out. Tape's all hanging out in the machine now. Pulled the tape out, wound the tape around the box, put it back in. I think with tape all sticking out of it. And, and uh, anyway, uh, management did not like that. Engineering did not like that, and uh, it ended my career in broadcast. Before I actually even got going in broadcast. If you don't want your tape operators taking the tops off machines and cleaning the heads, which is a tape operator's job, don't leave the tops off the machines. Don't leave the machines with no tops fastened down. 
and give the operators instructions to clean the heads every time you go on the air or every time you're going to edit something. I was actually told by my direct supervisor at the time to do it. That's what ticked me off was when I was on the air and my machine, my one machine to go to the air with broke down and my boss called me and said can you take the tape out can you carefully take the tape out I should have said no in here there's switches for uh, setting the time code or U-bit record run or free run for the servo external and internal sync You can do insert video editing, insert video, channel one or channel two audio or both or all three or assemble editing. This is the editing machine so it's got a couple flying erase heads. That's why you saw the four heads on the drum. Two of those are flying erase and two of them are, are record play. And uh, audio monitor, channel one, two or mix. Uh, mode select, edit normal or time based corrector. Dolby on and off for the sound. It's got a skew adjustment which just affects the tape tension, audio limiter, auto or manual video level and tracking, headphone level, jog shuttle mode, whether you're in shuttle mode or jog depending on what you're doing, and uh, that's pretty much it. Anyway, these were this is a expensive machines in their day. That does go down somehow. Uh, lift these tabs up. There we go. There we go. Anyway, that one's done. Thanks for watching. We'll uh, catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.